So Maryland's Republican governor says that he has serious doubts that President Trump can win a second term. Larry Hogan was reelected in November by double digits in a blue state with one of the largest minority populations in the country. Hogan reveals he is hearing from people who think he should consider a primary challenge to the president. This week, Maryland became the only state led by a Republican governor to sue the Trump administration over his declaration of a national emergency. CBS News political correspondent Ed O'Keefe spoke to Hogan at the Maryland State House in Annapolis. I think the president made some real mistakes here, and I don't think it, uh, declaring this, uh, using the declaration of emergency powers is the right thing to do, and I think it should be challenged. So in your view, it's not a national emergency? Well, it's certainly not. We've exaggerated uh, the, what's going on at the border, but we do have some issues down there. And here's my dad. Standing up to a president of his own party is something the governor learned from his father, former Congressman Lawrence Hogan. Republicans were mad as heck at him for decades, really, some of them, and never, you know, the, the White House was pretty furious. But in retrospect, people say, man, what courage. Who in 1974 became the first Republican congressman to publicly call for Richard Nixon's impeachment. No man, not even the president of the United States, is above the law. I probably learned more about integrity in one day from watching my dad during that crisis. Uh, than most people learn in a lifetime. Now, Hogan believes many in today's Republican Party have forgotten his father's lesson. I do believe that there are people in Congress and other leaders in the Republican Party uh, who, who have not stood up when they disagree or when they think that the president is doing something wrong. I've not been afraid to do that. Well, let me ask you this, since you're such a straight shooter. <laughs> is the president fit to be president? Look, I'm not in any uh, position to judge the, the, uh, the fitness of the president. You know, I've been pretty clear. I don't like uh, the tone that the president uses. I, I, I think there are times where he acts irrationally and, and makes decisions that are not only not uh, and, and, and does things in a way that aren't great for the Republican Party or for the country or for him and his agenda, for that matter. I mean, I think sometimes he can be his own worst enemy. So are you thinking about running? for president 2020? I was just sworn in a month ago uh, for my second term. Um, I've got a lot of work to do here in Maryland. Wow. I would say I'm being approached from a lot of different people. Um, and I guess the best way to put it is I haven't thrown them out of my office. In 2016, Hogan was one of the most high profile Republican office holders to withhold support for then candidate Trump's nomination. And little has changed. Would you support him for re-election? I, I don't uh, see uh, how my position would change much from before. I haven't uh, become more supportive than I was four years ago. I would say uh, the election is nearly two years away. Uh, I don't know who the nominees in either party are going to be. You say you're not certain who the nominees are going to be. Do you know something we don't about the president? Not yet. <laughs> um, Do you know who they're both going to be? No, I think it's fair. <laughs> if the special counsel report, though, came back and found pretty troubling evidence against the president, would that be a moment at which maybe you have to think... Somebody has I to think we'll, I, I don't want to speculate. I think you would see a number of potential uh, challengers uh, in the Republican Party consider jumping in. So if anything, you're issuing him a warning. Mm, I didn't the numbers mean, keep going I didn't down. mean it like that. I'm, I was giving him some friendly advice. And Ed O'Keefe is joining us now from Washington. What a fascinating interview, uh, Ed. We, we heard the governor express concerns about President Trump's re-election chances, but he didn't say he's ready to challenge him yet. So based on your conversation with him, how likely is it that Governor Hogan actually launches even an exploratory committee? Sure. So ever since his reelection in November, there's been a lot of chatter that perhaps he is somebody who should consider it, given that he is a sitting Republican office holder as opposed to a former Republican office holder and would come at this with at least some semblance of a political network. What we noticed yesterday is while he has sort of uh, enjoyed the attention and, and is somewhat flattered by the talk, he opened the door a little farther in our conversation than he has previously in suggesting that, you know, under certain conditions, perhaps there is a way for me to get into this. And I think the most notable part of that is he says, look, if his numbers continue to sink, not only in a general election, but maybe even among fellow Republicans, perhaps in the wake of the release of the special counsel report, then not only will he, but perhaps other Republicans also look at a potential primary challenge. So, you know, what's your take on his theory that the president may be weaker than, you know, we all think? I mean, certainly right after the midterm elections, it seemed like other Republicans were more willing to be critical. But now with the emergency being declared, I don't know if I still feel the same way. Well, you know, he made the point that the president remains 
wildly popular among Republican base voters. And so somebody at this juncture really trying to take him on seriously in a primary uh, could do so at their peril. But the point, the broader point he's concerned about is the fact that the president's general election re-election numbers are pretty poor right now, Some in some instances hitting only about 30, 40 percent. And, and his concern is that if people turn out to vote for somebody other than the president, they will also vote for the Democratic candidates down the ballot, for governor, for Senate, for Congress, for local offices. He suffered from that, Hogan did in Maryland this past November. While he won re-election by double digits, three Republican county executives were voted out of office, and attempts by the GOP to make gains in the state legislature also failed. And the day after the election, Hogan made clear that's because of the president. So he doesn't want to see it happen again in 2020. So, uh, Ed, Governor Hogan says he disagrees with the president that there's an emergency at the southern border and he will not support President Trump's reelection. Here's a question. The president uh, has targeted Republicans, people in his own party in the past who have not supported him. And in many instances, uh, you can name them, Mia Love, and there's just a whole list of Republicans who lost uh, their uh, midterm elections because the president went after them. Is he worried about that? Well, remember, he just won his second term, so he's term limited out anyway. So there's really no, uh, at least in Maryland, political retribution That's a good for point. <laughs> speaking out against the president. And so he knows he can do this from a position of strength. The potential problem for him is, does the president perhaps, you know, if Maryland comes calling for federal assistance on something, say, well, you know, maybe we should delay that or maybe we shouldn't give it to them because mm. of how he has treated me or how he's talked about me. Uh, he is about to also become, later this year, the head of the National Governors Association, a group that tries to work very closely with the White House on all sorts of issues. What if he gets snubbed by the White House for certain meetings or certain programs that governors would normally be involved in? I mean, that's smaller, less significant stuff. But Hogan knows, his people know, and that's why other Republicans who would like him to do this know, that because he faces no immediate political retribution in his current position, he perhaps can do this from a position of strength, as opposed to others who either aren't in office or would face primary challenges or the prospect of losing re-election in the position that they hold. Well, that's interesting. Ed O'Keefe, thank you so much. Thanks, Ed. Take care, guys.